Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. Friday, we reached the end of the week. Friday, Friday, big day. Big day? Yeah. Premier League? Premier League. Yeah, Arsenal back in action. I can't believe it's come round just so, so very quick. This new Premier League start is on upon us today, 8 p.m. UK time. God. Goodness. Anyhow, we're going to be uh, talking from uh, our perspective, our perspective, at least uh, one, on three new segments, three new segments. Well, there's a list of um, top earners that's been released, and uh, there's, there's a couple of surprises there, not, not nice surprises. <laughs> You'll probably be thinking, who are these top earners? Well, these players are in the top three, the top three. And actually some concerns about our left back from an ex- Spurs striker, who's now uh, a pundit on a particular radio station. But I agree with his comments about our number one left back. And also we've got the poll. There's been the latest poll that I kind of, I think I did this morning. And boy, have the numbers risen. The numbers have risen so, so very quick on the latest poll. But like it says down here, make sure, oops, it doesn't, does it? <laughs> it doesn't. How come it doesn't say it here? It says it now. Make sure that you do subscribe to Canon Foy TV. Come into the live chat, comment, debate, ask questions, but keep it clean. Keep it clean. Anyhow, without further ado, we're going to get into this one on the other side of this music intro. He says struggling with his mobile phone. <laughs> Welcome back to Canon Fodder, uh, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. I just tried to get everything all ready, and I kind of fell at the, the last hurdle. My mobile phone, I need to have this running whilst I'm doing a live show in case I miss something, or it tells me that there's something wrong with the live chat. But anyway, anyway, welcome to Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, a lot of you must have seen now the, 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 the first, second, maybe the third episode of the All or Nothing Amazon. And I've been like sending a message to John de Gizaguna throughout the whole yesterday. And they were saying about the All or Nothing. And I highlighted my, my I don't want to say my favorite parts, but the interesting parts, or the parts that I found very, very interesting. And John de Gizaguna, who you're going to probably see later on on the Easy Talk. So that, but it, it gives a human side. To, to the story. And I asked, I said, well, yeah, it does. It does. But Arteta still has got a lot to do. And just because I can see how things are being rolling out now, and again, the next episode, as I understand, is going to be the backdrop with Aubameyang and how he was stripped of the, of the captain's you know uh, armband. I understand that. But my expectations are still very, very high. These people, these players, because Arteta, Edu, they still, literally, there's, they, there's no free passes here. They don't get a free pass on Canon Foy TV. They still have to produce. And like I said, we're back in Premier League action later on tonight, 8 p.m. UK time. Uh, <laughs> expectation and Arsenal, these two words literally just don't, don't go together. But I'm expecting them to get the business done tonight. <sighs> a little rant there, man. A little rant. Ah, God damn. <laughs> Oh, dear. Anyway, let's get into the first new segment. The first um, actually new segment is in regards to uh, these two players, actually. Arsenal players' wages list shows Thomas Partey and Nico Pepe both in the top three. Top three earners now. Nico Pepe and Thomas Partey are among Arsenal's top earners, and fans appear to be unhappy. But I mean, this is coming from the Sun newspaper. So, you know, you take it as you as you want, especially after seeing what likes of Bukayo Saka and Emerson Fro uh, were being paid by comparison. I completely understand that. Arsenal wages have been revealed, and the fans are astonished to learn that Nico Pepe and Thomas Partey are two of the club's uh, top three earners. Partey earns a reported £200,000 a week, briefly became the highest paid player at the Emirates following the departures of Aubameyang and Lacazette, though um, has since been overtaken by new sign Gabriel uh, Jesus, who earns roughly, roughly a ballpark figure of £265,000 a week, according to figures provided by um, what's that? Spotrack? Spotrack? 
I don't know who they who they are. But in spite of the torrid uh, three years um, he's spent in North London, Pepe remains one of Arsenal's highest earners. Star, stars on one hundred forty thousand pounds a week, and the fact that he's making more money than uh, some of the club's best, better, younger uh, talents has a uh, it appears to have rubbed some of the Gunners um, fans up the wrong way. I mean, one, uh, again, I, I don't think I can read this out because I need to verify if they've actually said this or the Sun newspaper um, has made this up. But um, I think how you can frame this is that when you've looked at the players, the young players who've, who've you know, performed well above what we were expecting from them over the last two seasons, and then you can see the players who are supposed to be the experienced players literally faltering season after season. It, it puts it in perspective. It puts that in perspective. And then you look at Thomas Party, his injuries and his bit part performances literally is just not enough for me. And then we talk about the player like, like nobody else, Nico Pepe. Again, top three earner, £140,000 a week. Again. And you remember the comment that Edu said where he said literally, you know, when players are... are of a certain profile and they're producing, then it's good. But when the player is like 26 plus and they're not performing, they're killing the club. And not, you know, such high wages. And you know, London, the lifestyle is so wonderful. So these two players, they fit that profile. Both 27 years of age, not performing. One more injured than the other. I get that, but the other. When given his opportunity, he's just not shone enough. And I don't know, am I am I being too too harsh on these two players? I don't think I am. I don't, you know, cha- Arsenal's not a charity. It's not a charity. Sorry, guys, I need to drink some water. The the players are not volunteering. They're getting paid, you know, a king's ransom to perform. And I think you know may- maybe Edo is right. Literally, it's Better off literally just letting the players go. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But again, you could probably say, actually, Alex, you are being too hard or too harsh on his players, but I don't think I am. In the top three earners, Thomas Party, Nicholas Pepe, and really, hand on your heart, could you actually tell me now that you can say that these two players have consistently performed? Don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, and then the second news segment, like I said, is is worrisome, man. Worrisome. Growing pains. Now, Alan Brazil um, has said on um, his particular radio station this morning, early doors, that he's worried about left back uh, Kieran Tierney due to you know consistent injury problems. The former um, Tottenham Hotspurs uh, forward said that. Um, He's getting worried about his Scottish compatriot who joined Arsenal from Celtic in the sum of 2019 for £25 million, pounds, according to Sky Sports. You know, he said that Tierney has, has had injury problems during his time at Arsenal and he has yet just, you know, just to return to full fitness. And um, I, I'm really, really worried about Kieran Tierney. Um, again, I don't want to give you guys too much. If you've not seen the All or Nothing, the last episode I saw, episode three, some of the players, you know, are in the physio's bench and Tierney is there, man. I was thinking, I, I don't know, really, really don't know what to, to make of that. Again, a player is no good to us if he's always going to be injured. No good. And it's got nothing to do with liking a particular player. Nothing to do with that. So I need to just quickly refresh this. And What's it telling me? Sorry about this, people. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hurry up, hurry up. There we go. Right. Um, and the last uh, new segment. <laughs> hello, goodbye, or goodbye, hello? Uh, I don't know. Gunners prepared Tillemans bid, but faced nightmare scenario. Leicester City, uh, Yuri Tillemans, uh, has been heavily linked, as we know, with Arsenal, in a switch to Arsenal. And it appears that the Gunners could now be ready to lodge an official bid. Before I go on, I, I can feel myself just getting tired now about doing new segments on on, on, on um, Yuri Tillemans. I can feel myself getting you know, a little bit you know fed up on this. But um, yeah, you know, according to the Sun, they go one further and claim that Arsenal move for Tillemans is imminent. 
Tillman's contract has just a year left to run and it's thought he can be acquired at a, a, a club price or cut price amid Leicester, Leicester City's uh, financial difficulties. I, d- I don't know, man. But anyway, what I would say on top of that, a little appendage that Arteta makes a transfer promise. Gunner's boss, Arteta, insists that there is still plenty of time to get more signs uh, through the door at the Emirates as the clock ticks down towards the deadline. The Spaniard has already admitted his hopes to get some more business done this month and revealed the club's recruitment team are going flat out to make it a reality. I'm just thinking, do I need to do another update video on your Tillemans? I don't think so, man. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyhow, so these have been the new segments currently running on Canon for the TV. Like I said, come into the live chat. Let me know your thoughts about the ongoing situation with our players who, for whatever reason, sustained injuries. I didn't even mention Emma Sifro this morning. I mentioned him yesterday. Injured. You know, your your Thomas Parties, you know, your your Tommy Ashus, your Smith Rose, your Kieran Tierney's. And it's always the same players, isn't it? Oh, almost always the same players. So is it a fact that we're playing these players when they're not fully fit, or is it the training regime? I've got no idea. Really, really no idea. Okay, so and um, before I go into the live chat. I do need to check out and see if there's been any comments on our Twitter feed. And there has not been any uh, comments on our Twitter, which leads me to believe that everyone's probably still sleeping. 19 minutes after the hour of 11 a.m. UK time, and people are still sleeping. Get out! Get out of the bed! Get out! I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, all right, and then we can now look on the latest um, poll that we've done, the voting, and it actually is it's quite topical. Prediction. What do you predict for today versus Crystal Palace? Where is it? Crystal Palace. And I'll say within not even 20 minutes. Not even 20 minutes. We've had almost 200 votes. Well, 184 votes. No comments just let, just yet. And 11 likes. Keep the likes flowing, people. Keep it flowing like nobody's business. Prediction. Crystal Palace versus Arsenal. Choose only one. 4% of you have gone for... A win for Palace. <laughs> and 5% of the subscribers have gone for a draw. And 90%, hey, what happened to 1%? There's like, I've got the, the probably like the variables, isn't it? So they've rounded it up or rounded it down. And 90% have gone for a win for the Arsenal. Don't let me down, Arsenal. That's what I'm saying. Don't let me down. So also come in with your prediction. What is your prediction for the game today? All right. Now I believe I'm going to the live chat and there's only been a couple of comments, note of noteworthiness, one of which is from my moderator. Uh, Ashley says, uh, hey up, Gunas. <clears throat> and good morning, Alex. I hope all is well with you and the family. Moses, thank you for, for your, I mean, you're always like, asking about how I am. And how my family are. Well, you know, last few days I haven't been feeling too well, to be honest. But it's like my mentor or, or would always tell me, you know, the the bad times don't stay forever. You know, after the storm, they always the, the, the clouds start to clear. So I, I I feel a lot better. Thank you, a lot better. Thank you for asking. Uh, so no more comments. What's going on with thirty five people watching? No more comments. There's no blockage. So thirty five, you are watching me. Come into the live chat, ask questions, debates, discuss, but keep it clean. Keep it clean. Um, so what I have to say uh, whilst the live chat is just waking up or clearing the, the, the sleep from the eyes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You never know. <laughs> it's <laughs> later on this evening is the return of the Easy Talk. Yes, we are back in full effect. Uh, I'm going to be joined by, uh, let me just think now, it's, we're going to be joined by the Enforcer, the Geezer, and the Don. The Enforcer, the Geezer, and the Don. I kid you not. Kid you not. 8 p.m. kickoff time. It's going to be a short show because it's going to be at 7, p- 7 p.m. and we have to leave enough time for everybody to get ready and watch the game, the game, the game, the game, Alex. Crystal Palace versus 
Arsenal. And that's what I've got to say. <laughs> that's what I've got to say. So that's why I always say, you know, make sure that you do um, subscribe because I don't want you to miss out on the content and even the show. The show later on this evening, 7 p.m., the Easy Talk, we are back. We'll be joined by the Enforcer, the Geezer, and the Don. Bunch of crooks. <laughs> Bunch of crooks. Uh, anyway, anyway, <laughs> just give one more. Oh, two more comments here. Bishop, good morning. Uh, Bishop says, up oh, predictions. See, what well a Bishop. Uh, also win 2 0 or 3 0. I hope we can leave Selhurst Park with a clean sheet, but something tells me it might not happen. It might not happen. I did predict a 2 1 or a 3 1, didn't I? But I didn't say who's going to win. Moses says, uh, so I'll go for a 2 0 win for Arsenal. Okay, very good. Very good. And let me just refresh the page and see if there's been. Uh, wow, no, there's no, no, no comments. What's going on? What's going on? I oh, had this joker. This joker. I'm not even going to bother read his comment. Uh. Okay, today, right, let me refresh this page here, I just see, there's been any more, I didn't even speak about Savage, I spoke about Savage yesterday, I spoke about him, right, so we are, we do have now over 200 votes, 202 votes, now we have 12 likes, and the numbers have remained the same, you know, prediction for today, 91, oh, there you go, the 90, the, the 1%, yeah, 91% of the subscribers have gone for the win for Arsenal. 5% uh, believe it's going to be a draw. And 4% of you believe it's going to be a win for Crystal Palace. And the rest, I don't know. Okay. Uh, oops. Ah, sorry about that. Uh, hi, all. 32, uh, pop in the chat. Say hi. Let us know where you are from. And, of course, smash that like button. Yeah. Let us know which part of the world that you are typing from. We don't want any keyboard warriors over here because you've got dangerous Ashley D. Now, Ashley Dangerous D, the moderator in the live chat. So, listen, be aware. Be scared. Be very scared. No, be afraid. Be very afraid. We've got Ashley D. Ooh, we've got Ashley D. <laughs> Uh, it's news coming in about James Madison. Uh, what do you know about that? Uh, Moses, um, I spoke about him on the evening show. Um, the, the report I read that, you know, he's waiting to go to Arsenal, to be signed by Arsenal, whilst Newcastle want to buy him. And I said, I don't believe it. Uh, I don't believe it. I don't. I, it, for me, it is just paper talk. At £60 million, do you really believe Arsenal are going to go in the market and buy... James Madison for £60 million. He's not a priority. He's not a priority for Arsenal. So if he, if he, where is he most likely going to go to if he is eventually going to leave Leicester City, who for some reason, the club is just losing their stars. You know, Casper Schmeichel has gone to Monaco, I believe. Monaco? And um, who's the other player? There's another player that, um, uh, oh my goodness, Fofana. He's been linked to a move to Chelsea. So they're, they're losing a lot of their stars. But James Madison come to Arsenal, not for £60 million. So, dear fellow, you're better off waiting for Newcastle to come in and buy you. If anyone can, Newcastle can, can but not to Arsenal. Not to Arsenal. <clears throat> Yeah, for CZNZ, uh, morning. Uh, how many goals do you think Jesus will get this 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 season? Good morning to you. Um, I made a prediction. Was it last week? Was it last week? I think it was last week. I did a thumbnail and I had Geba Jesus and Eddie Nketiah. And, and I put their 60 plus goals. 60 plus goals. And I think people are thinking, oh, but did you mean it was 6 0 because we scored six goals against Sevilla? I said no, sixty goals between the two strikers. I think he'll he'll be towards the 30, 30 goal mark, the thirty goal mark. And I think Enketia, controversial for a lot of you, 
if we give him constant game time, I think he might come close to that as well. Controversial? Controversial. But that's just my opinion. But I think Gabriel Jesus will be almost close to 30 goals uh, in this season. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. What about yourself? How many goals do you think he will score? Kampamu, good morning. Uh, I'm late, sir. Greetings from all the police uh, officers here in Kampala, Uganda. But how is the transfer of uh, Sani, Cody, uh, Gakpo and Tillemans? I, I thank you. Uh, please visit Kampala, Uganda. I want to. I want to. I want to. Maybe when I've gone to um, Namibia, we'll make, we'll make the journey uh, to, to visit you and all your, your, um, your police uh, uh, officer colleagues there. But I uh, thank you. Thank you for coming in. So you're asking about Sani. Sane, for me, it's, it's not going to happen. It won't happen. It, it won't happen. Uh, who else? Cody Gakpo. We're still waiting on news on that. Again, we're still at that point where Arsenal being told, if you want Cody Gakpo, you've got to show the money. The money, he's valued at £38 million. Tierney, it's spoken about, uh, not Tierney, uh, Tillemans. <sighs> Arsenal. Co co come on. Come on. Do you know it's like when someone's promised you something and you're thinking, oh, right, are they saying they're going to promise this or they're going to promise that? Now, I know Mikko Teta has said many times that they, he's not going to talk about specific players who are not Arsenal players. So I understand that you know, to a certain extent. And neither has Edu. When asked questions about uh, Lucas Becchetta, he has actually already said, look, as of today... I'm only telling you this. I respect and like Lucas uh, Paqueta because of my time when I was out working with the Brazilian uh, national team. National team, but as far as we know, there is no, there's nothing there. He's also said that about Leroy Sane, and Leroy Sane has always said that you know he remembers a time when he was uh, being coached by Mikel Arteta. But Tillemans, I don't think there's any excuse. I don't think there's any excuse. You know, if you if you are seriously going and trying to get this player, what's the hold up? But again, we are we are speculating, aren't we? Because we go in, we read the reports, whether it's on social media or you go to your local newspaper and you've got a physical newspaper there, and they're telling us something that maybe they want us to believe, but might not be true. It might not be true. So that's why I always say. It's speculation window, not transfer window. Until we see the player sign a contract or hold up a jersey, until that point, it's only speculation. So Sane, for me, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, I have faint hopes because we're seeing uh, Alexander Zinchenko sign, we're seeing Gabriel Jesus sign, and the commonality is that they, they both were coached by Mikel Arteta because he was a coach at Man City. And I'm thinking, am I putting two, to, two and two together and coming up with five? Because Leo Sano was also coached by Mikel Arteta at Man City. So I've got that faint hope there. I would like Leo Sano to be at Arsenal. I would. But I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really, really sorry, my friend. <sighs> Hi, Alex. It's Eric from Qatar. Uh, how uh, far is your Tillemans deal? Uh, Eric, um, have you come in before? I think I think we probably spoke to you. Uh, I'm not sure. Are you a new subscriber? Okay, no, I've just spoken about uh, Tillemans. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to repeat that. I'm watching from the USA, but always watching from Liberia, but uh, just uh, visiting the USA. Bishop, say hello to your family, please. Um, everyone in... Whoops, let me just quickly do this. So I just need to do this very, very quickly. Uh, move this. Uh, um, yeah, so thank you. So you visited the family. Well, listen, Bishop, say hello to your family. I'm, I'm not sure. Get all your family around your, lap, your laptop or your mobile phone. And when they're together, say, Alex, they're together. And I'll say hello to each and every one of your family members. How, how about that? How about that? Is that? Does that sound okay to you? Get all your family members. I know it might be quite early for you in the States. But if you want to, get all your family members around your mobile phone and I'll say hello to all your family members. I don't know. 
<laughs> but thank you, thank you. Uh, I think um, Jesus would get twenty plus goals, and Eddie. Do you, do you know what? That's a good. That is a good balance there. That's a good prediction there. Twenty plus goals and fifteen. Is that not enough? That's enough, isn't it? So we're talking about forty odd goals. And I'm thinking, all right, sixty goals. <laughs> Alex, don't be too harsh, man. Don't be too harsh. But you can see the quality in Gabriel Jesus. And even Elmsworth Rose said, you know what? God, he's, he's incredible. And I'm on the phone to my mates, oh, he's incredible. I've seen him in training, how sharp he is. And I hope all the other players will look at Gabriel Jesus. And you look at Martinelli, the guy is always on it, always sharp. But I just feel like, has, he, has Martinelli progressed? Has he, has he progressed? If I'm doing that, that means no. I don't. I don't think he has progressed. But I want to see all those guys there. Don't rely only on Gabriel Jesus to inspire you. Don't rely on Gabriel Jesus to motivate you. Motivate yourself. Now I have seen the all, and I think the first three episodes, and I can see how Arteta motivates his players from different angles, different ways. But the players have got to come with their own motivation their own motivation, anything else is a plus. But one, from, one thing for me that's still faltering, I know we've just given the captain's armband to Martin Erdegaard, but we still don't have enough leaders on the pitch. And the one thing that I realised from the all or nothing, I didn't hear a peep from Granit Xhaka. Didn't hear anything. They didn't feature him. Maybe when it starts to show the next few episodes, we might hear more from Granit Xhaka, but I'm thinking... The first three episodes, didn't hear a peep from him. We need more leaders. We need more leaders in that team there. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Any more com any comments here? Any more comments? All right. There's not been any comments. I'll take it. Everyone's still sleeping on Twitter. Everyone's probably still sleeping on Twitter. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Let's refresh the page for the vote. The vote that we've done now, I'll say in the last uh, 35 minutes, is in regards to the prediction. What's your prediction for the game today? The game today? Yeah, Alex. I can't believe how quickly the season has come back on, upon us again. And then November, what's going to happen? More football. And do you know what? As much as modern footballers are instant millionaires, these players are not getting any rests, are they? Season's done. You know, we go on a pre-season. They travel. They come back. More pre-season games. And then before you know it, they're back in the Premier League. Oh, Premier League is over. And now the World Cup. They don't really get that much rest, do they? Talk about burnout, man. Anyhow, so the um, the prediction, again, the latest uh, voting we've done on the platform, if you want to vote, check out yeah, the, the, um, the community tab and you see the, the latest uh, poll that we've done there. Again, prediction for the Crystal Palace game. 8 p.m. kickoff, local time. Now we have 243 votes. This one might be a record breaker. This one might be a record breaker. We've got 12 likes. 4% uh, of the subscribers believe it's going to be a win for Crystal Palace. 7% of the subscribers believe it's going to be a draw. And Alex looking down, trying to remind himself of, of the, the maths. That doesn't make any sense. Actually, actually yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Um, believe it's going to be... 90% uh, believe it's going to be a win for Arsenal. So 7 plus 4 is 11. 90 plus 11 equals 101. This is supposed to be out of 100%, man. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Anyhow. All right. Let's have a look here. Let's have a look here. Uh... Will M. Hooper. It's been a long time. I saw you in the live chat on another channel. Was it? 
who was it? Was it uh, Arsenal Alex or was it Luca or maybe it was Arsenal 101? Anyhow, welcome back in the live chat, my friend. As I hope you're keeping well. It's Yeah, I am. Thank you. I hope you're keeping well as well. It shows that we've lacked quality that uh, Jesus and Zinchenko have come in and changed our, our team significantly. And they're not even City's best players. Tillman soon. Wow, that's a, that's a good shout. Did you, there was a documentary last night. Says Fabregas. I only caught that the last 15 minutes of it and where he was actually saying that he he, he realised, listen to this, he realised that the club literally didn't have much ambition after eight years at Arsenal and he said he had to go back to Arsene Wenger and plead with him to let him go. And all Arsene Wenger could say is, well, we couldn't compete. But why could we not compete? Why could we not compete? That was the whole idea. I, I'm going to sound like a broken record now. Leaving Highbury to go to a new stadium at that time. Why? Because we need to compete to compete with the big clubs in Europe. And then only for Arsene Wenger again to say, well, yeah, we, we you know we, we couldn't compete because we had to play at the stadium. I was thinking. But the thing is, Cesc Fabregas was, was, was right. He left Arsenal to go to Barcelona and he won silverware. And actually, I can't remember the guy's name. Um, we tried to get him on the channel, actually. Uh, my goodness, he's a, he's a Spanish um, uh, sports writer. I can't remember his name, but he actually said that when Cesc went there, I think towards the end, I think he spent three seasons there at Barcelona, there was some recourse, not recourse, but discord against Cesc Fabregas. People just literally, they didn't rate him that much. And what the sports writer was saying that is that if he had stayed like uh, Messi, if he had stayed for the majority of his career at Barcelona, then there would have been no problems. But the fact that he left when he was young, went to Arsenal eight years, then went back again, I think, wow. But you know what? The point you're trying to make there, the fact that we've got these two players They've made a significant change. They have made a significant change in Arsenal. But the business starts today, 8 p.m. That's when the business starts. The preseason, we had a, we had a, a, you know, a reasonable se uh, preseason. But now transmit, transfer all that energy and performance into the Premier League. And there was one part, again, I'm going I'm to give you a little spoiler alert. <laughs> When the individual, individual and development uh, um, person, coach, uh, Carlos Cuesta, he was speaking to um, Bukayo Saka. And Bukayo Saka said, well, you know, the season doesn't depend on one game or some, some games. Bukayo Saka, I have to say, I, I disagree with you. It depends on all the games. All the games. Everything matters. Everything matters on how you feel about the game, you know, whether you're injured, everything matters in that instant, right until the end of the season. All the games matter. But it was good to see that they got like an individual coach, development coach in Carlos Quest stuff. Oh, okay, that's cool. The guy's quite young. I was actually thinking, is that the Quarteta's son? Because a little bit similar, you know what I mean? But no, it was just, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, you're right. You're right, Will. You're right. And it just goes to show again why we need to go into and recruiting quality players. Break the bank to get quality players. Don't just make do with this player and say, oh, well, you know what, he's one for the future. If you're going to think about players for the future, think about the academy because those players there are the players for the future. You don't need to go out and say, okay, well, look at him. He has potential. He's one for the future. Otherwise, what's the point of having an academy? These players there are for the future. Don't go out and waste the money. And I'm saying that, but Marcos, I like Marcos. He seems okay. Still unproven in the Premier League because the Premier League hasn't started yet. But he's one for the future. He's not for the here and now. Uh, okay, uh, Crystal Palace 0 and Arsenal 3. Uh, Saka looked tired at the end of last season. Yes, he did. I had a discussion with this. Who was it with? Actually, on numerous occasions, it was on another channel. 
about Bukayo Saka. Yeah, being overplayed. I didn't want to mention his name because I actually wanted to say something else, Ray, <laughs> about him. I communicated with him and his agents to get him onto Canon Foy TV. And his representatives say, yes, yeah, of course. He, and I sent him some samples of the Easy Talk and other uh, segments we did on, on the channel. And um, they said, yeah, is there any money? Is there a budget? And I said, unfortunately, because we are a small channel, there is no money. But sometime in the future, when we do have some more in the coffers, more money, more money in the coffers, then we'll get in contact with you again. But yeah, we've we've tried to get Gillum uh, Bal yeah, Balogwe. Yeah, and they said yes, but it's down to the money. We're only a small channel. And I do rate him. I rate him as well. I know the interview that he did with uh, Unai Emery a couple of seasons ago. Yeah, but I didn't want to mention that. Thank you, Ray. Good morning, Ray. How are you? Uh, before I go any further, uh, Ray, can you please post... I don't know if you're doing a watch-along. If you're doing a watch-along, can you please post the link to your watch-along in the live chat, please? Or actually, I think what I might have to do... Ray, one second. Don't do anything just yet. Uh, don't do anything just yet, please. Where are we? Where are we? Let me make you... Uh, okay, there we go. Right, so Ray, so uh, as I understand it, with this platform that I use, you cannot post uh, any links or any videos in it unless you are a moderator. So you are now number nine, moderator. So if you're still listening to me, Ray, please post the link to your watch along or to the channel in the live chat so see if we can get um, some more people over subscribing and viewing your content. Wonderful channel, people. Really good content. Um, uh, okay, uh, enjoying the, the content uh, from Alex. Uh, remember uh, to be uh, to be back for the East Talk later today. Thank you for that. And also say hi, say hi to Alex and hit that thumbs up. So, Ray, quickly, put the link to your, I don't know, if you're doing a watch long later on today, or if you are, I, I don't know, I don't know. Just let, let me know quickly, quickly, quickly. Hey, some updates. <laughs> Ronald. <laughs> Uh, great name there, man. A really good name. I, my, I think my mum's uh, one of her uncles. His name was Ronald. He was a, he was a great man, as I understand. So, that's a powerful name you got there, Ronald. Thank you for that. Uh, from from Arsenal. Okay, and there you go. So, people, please. I'm not going to say you have to. You don't have to, but I would like you to subscribe to Arsenal Fan Circle, hosted by Ray. Um, our sister channel, uh, we, we have close links with um, with uh, Arsenal Fan Circle. So please go over there. Ray, I don't know whether it's, is it, if it's the, the channel link, oh, it is, it is a channel link. So make sure you go over there, support your friendly local podcaster, please, because I, this is not my job. It's not my job. This is only a hobby for me. And I tell you what, I've been, I've been, Honoured to have met so many people who I can now call friends that if I hadn't done the channel, I would never have met. And it's pleasing to see that some of my contributors who have come together, I've also, know, or I've also met as well, thinking, wow, Canon for TV are bringing people together. You cannot beat that. I don't care how much you earn, if you're a billionaire or millionaire or whatever, you cannot beat that creating a community where people can come together and be civil, that is priceless. Absolutely priceless. So I'm quite proud about that. I have met Ray. I met Ray a few years ago. I have, you know, been on his channel a, a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, Sundays, doing uh, Sunday evening shows is not going to be my thing much longer. But bringing people together, I thought, that that is priceless. It's priceless. You can't put a price on that. Anyhow, um, so Ray says, uh, uh, I just appreciate that, my friend. Uh, anytime, anytime. And you're also invited to come back on, on the channel. The door is always open. Our door is always open to you, Ray, and anybody else on your channel. But I know I've still got to sort out that collaboration. It's difficult because we've got a few more content creators who are now in the mix. And trying to get everyone together on a particular time and day is 
proven to be a challenge, but I like challenges. Okay, uh, Ronald says, uh, I'm a true fan from uh, Uganda, uh, Arsenal. Uh, we go tonight. Oh, 3-1. So, Ronald, who's going to score the three goals? Who's going to score the three goals? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Uh, and whilst Ronald is just thinking about that, let me just quickly look for the last, excuse me, last time on Twitter and see... That all right, there's not been any comments there on our Twitter feed. Uh, okay, I'll refresh the page here. So, what I'm going to do, let me quick review the news of today from Canon for TV's perspective, just for my good friend uh, Ronald. All right, so uh, first up, we spoke about um, these two players, these two players, yeah, Nico Pepe and Thomas Party, and there's been a report of such. And these two players now form the top three earners at Arsenal. And it seems to have annoyed some some fans, at least on Twitter, at least. But these figures come courtesy of, of um, SpotTrack. And they tell us that party earns a reportedly a ballpark figure of £200,000 a week. Nicholas Pepe earns roughly £140,000 a week. It will probably annoy me just the fact that I look at the performances. I look at how Thomas Partey has got injured. Um, and then you look at, on the other hand, the youngsters who have performed above and beyond. Above and beyond. You've got your Bacala Sackers. You've got your Martinelli's. You've got your Emerson Rhodes, who are nowhere near earning the same amount of money. Nowhere near. Now, I'm not going to read um, what, what's been uh, reported that um, some of the fans have been saying on Twitter. I'm not going to, because I, I've not checked that. I haven't checked that. I'm not going to check it. But, um, yes, very, very interesting about that. And the second segment we spoke about was about uh, Kieran Tierney. And this is coming from uh, Alan Brazil. Yeah, he's speaking on, on a particular radio station uh, early this morning. He's worried about left-back Kieran Tierney you know, due to his injury problems. Yeah, former Tottenham Hotspurs forward said that um, he's getting worried about his Scottish compatriot who joined Arsenal from Celtic in the summer of 20, uh, 2019 for £25 million. And um, Tierney's um, you know, persistent injury problems. I have seen all three episodes of the All or Nothing, even though I said I wasn't going to watch it, but I ended up watching them. And the last episode, again, spoiler alert, uh, 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 there's a segment where there's three players on the physios bench. And one of the three players... It's Kieran Tierney. And I'm thinking it is it is worrying. It's worrying to say the least. Not good. Not good. And then we spoke about this gentleman here. Uh, I, I say hello, goodbye, or maybe it might be goodbye, goodbye. I, I'm not sure. Uh, Let's just say to Euro Tillemans has been you know, heavily linked with a switch to Arsenal. And it appears that the Gunners could now be ready to lodge an official bid. And this is, again, coming from <laughs> the Sun newspaper, at least. Uh, which is why I'll take this with a pinch of salt. Uh, yeah, they go one further claim that Arsenal move uh, for Jude Tillemans is imminent. Tillemans' contract has just one year left to run, and it's thought that he can be acquired at uh, a cut price uh, amid Leicester City's financial uh, difficulties. They've lost Cassius Michael to, I think, is it Monaco? Um, also, um, Fofana has been heavily linked to Chelsea, and Leicester City's empire, man. I mean... They're, they're, they're in a good place because they've got a really qu good quality manager in Brendan Rodgers, but they have to do something. They have to do more activity um, in, the, in the speculation window, not the transfer window, the speculation window. So just for you, Ronald, I've repeated the news of today on Canon Fodder TV. That is it. That is it. Let's see if there's been any more comments. Uh, Ronald says... Uh, just uh, Jesus 2 and 1 from Saka. Okay. Okay. Wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. I've got some DIY I need to do. And I'm not a plumber. Ray, are you a plumber? Well, you're too far away anyway, isn't it? If I, uh, if I don't come for the east, you know, a flood. There's been a flood. So, <laughs> anyway, people, uh, Thank you so very much to you for listening to me. 
thank you to you for sticking with us um, over the course of almost five years now. I can't believe how the time has just flown and I'm getting younger. <laughs> I don't feel younger. But um, yeah, the, the time has flown so very, very quick and you are still with us. Thank you. And I'm saying thank you. I always say thank you because we have now surpassed, surpassed 18,000 subscribers. 18,040, 41, 42 subscribers for me. That is absolutely incredible. Thank you. Thank you. And just to think that you have parted, some of you have parted with your hard earned money to buy merchandise, to give us super chats, all those things there. You've become a member as well. So thank you so very much for supporting us and being part of this community because it is a community that we have built up. A symbiotic relationship. One cannot exist without the other. Thank you so very much for that. I will be back later on this evening. It's going to be 7 p.m. Because remember, the Easy Talk, uh, the flagship uh, live show on Canon 4 TV is back in full effect 7 p.m local time, which is why I always say make sure that you do subscribe to Canon 40 TV. I'm going to be joined by the Enforcer, the Geezer, and the Don. <laughs> I kid you not. They sound like a bunch of criminals, don't they? But they're not. They're my contributors on Canon 40 TV. All right, so enjoy the remnants uh, of your day uh, when you're after or evening, and please don't forget to subscribe. And I shall see you in like what's it, the, 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 seven hours and six minutes time. Seven hours and six minutes time. Until then, it's finished. It's finished. Canon fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. <laughs>